Welcome to the SEO.co Search Engine Optimization Podcast. Digital marketing essentials and next level tactics. From off-site and on-site optimization to persuasive selling and everything in between. You'll learn actionable tips on what it takes to outright and outrank your competition. Now, here's your host, Timothy Carter. Thanks for joining me on the podcast. Today, we're going to talk about seven common content mistakes. You know, what you don't know really can hurt you. I can't think of any content marketers out there who are really knowingly sabotaging their own their own work by in, intentionally ignoring best practices. But, you know, bad content and seemingly obvious mistakes, you know, abound both on-site and off-site content. The only conclusion I can I can come up with is, you know, these writers and, and content creators don't know what they're doing wrong. And and this effect is made greater by the likelihood that they're they're seeing a handful of of, of positive effects from their work. You know, the more you learn about content marketing and the more aware you are of your own mistakes, the better your t- content can become. You know, even if it's just a tweak here or a tweak there, you know, these adjustments can eventually mean a much higher traffic volume and a much greater reputation in your, you know, your sphere of influence and your site's visibility organically. So as you continue to advance your, your content marketing campaign, you know, stay aware of, of these common content mistakes. And there, there are seven of them here. Um, one writing to a, a general audience. You know, if you're not careful, it's really easy to slip into the general audience mentality. You know, when you when you delve into a certain topic or you answer a certain question and you're you're writing by yourself, you naturally tend to think about the topic in broad terms. You know, for example, if you're writing about applying to college, you might be tempted to describe the process as objectively as possible. You know, this leads to thorough but not necessarily appealing content. If your target audience is teenagers close to graduating high school, you might take a moment to, to talk about the, the fears and anxieties surrounding the application process. Doing so, you know, makes your content more relatable and more appealing to a central target audience. Otherwise, that, you know, excessive generality, you know, might, might turn your ideal customer away. Uh, second mistake, you know, staying in the middle, you know, you'll, you'll face a similar dilemma if you try to stick with the middle ground approach to, you know, maybe a complex and possibly a controversial issue in your industry. As a professional, you know, you're naturally inclined to take, to take sides as rarely as possible, you know, sticking to that safe, neutral ground that, that won't rile anybody up. However, you know, it's, it's better to pick a side and stick to it, even though you might turn off a small portion of your audience. The rest of your audience will will like you better for it, and and you won't fade into the the white noise of you know fence sitters that 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 inevitably arises uh, as you try to be as middle ground as possible. Uh, a third problem failing to to provide adequate background you know generally you know content marketers are are specialists in their respective you know subject matter because of this you know you may already be well versed in the topics that your target audience may know nothing about for example if you're if you're writing a, if you're if you're blog writing about SEO you know you might assume that your audience already knows how link building works and start writing about advanced techniques you know, this is bad because it can make people feel like they aren't advanced or knowledgeable enough to appreciate your content. You know, instead, make make it a point to, to cover sufficient background information, even if it's just a note and a link to another more basic post you've written to in the past. Uh, another common mistake, uh, focusing on your own perspective. You know, when you're when you're writing a post, you know, you, you have you have to think about your own perspective. It's unavoidable, but if you write the entire article about what you think is important, you'll end up doing more harm than good. You know, you, you need to think about what your customer's needs are. 
For example, you know, you could write a detailed post about a new technology that's going to change the way you do business. Yeah, this could be a great topic, but only if you write about how that technology is going to affect your customers directly. You know, get out of your point of view and get into your your ideal client's shoes and see it from their vantage point. Makes your writing so much better. Uh, number five, excessively pitching. You know, content marketing is a perfect opportunity to express the value of your own products and services. But only when done so, you know, subtly. You know, any overt pitching of your own business or your own products, you know, will instantly, you know, register as advertising to anyone reading it. And, you know, most readers these days, you know, will abandon that effort, you know, in favor of something more objective. You know, so remember, your, your, your primary goal is to bring value to your readers, answering their ideal, uh, giving them the ideal answer to their, their sought after question, which is what they did the search for, you know, making pitches and, and encouraging conversions can only come after you've established that groundwork with your quality content. So, you know, call to actions shouldn't be everywhere and you shouldn't be excessively pitching about how great you guys are. Uh, number six, ignoring feedback, you know, feedback comes in many forms and ignoring any of them is, is bad for your campaign's potential. Review user comments and, and, and social sharing metrics regularly to see how your content is being, you know, interacted with, you know, if, if certain topics, you know, certain formats or, or certain approaches are met with, with criticism or worse indifference, you know, you'll, you'll need to act quickly to get your content, you know, back on pace and, and visible, you know, so even if, if your users aren't, aren't giving you direct feedback, you know, you can use their, their behavior, you know, looking through Google analytics, you know, tracking site visits, you know, to me to measure that interest level of those particular content pieces. Uh, number seven, relying on too many formats. There are dozens of types of content available and it's in your best interest to take advantage of them. There is no target audience in the world who prefers only one type of content. Yet so many content marketers settle into a rhythm and routine with one particular format, you know, such as uh, blogs or, or video content, you know, incorporate as many formats as you can reasonably handle handle uh, to keep things fresh. And while you're at it, you know, get involved on multiple different social platforms too. So, Making one or more of these mistakes doesn't mean you're a bad content marketer. In fact, most of us have, have made at least one of these mistakes in the past. You know, nobody's content is perfect, but if you can learn to avoid some of the most common pitfalls, you can certainly uh, ratchet up your content to the next level. And if you need some help with that content, come on over to seo.co and schedule a time to have a free consultation. You can learn how we can help you scale your ability through content marketing to outright and outrank your competition. Thank you for joining us on the SEO.co podcast. We appreciate your time. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show and visit SEO.co for more resources based on today's topic, as well as access to more podcast episodes to help you improve your site's long-term SEO success.